Hallelujah. Praise God. This is going to be a very uh, important message. Um, many uh, need to hear this today because so few today really uh, know the Lord or really know uh, the Good Shepherd. They Very few know the Lord as the Good Shepherd. Um, and uh, very few ever, ever hear his voice. Uh, they don't know his voice. Um, and we're going to look at the scripture and see that there are those in the scripture that did not know the Lord. They didn't know the Lord's voice. Um, but uh, if you'll turn with me first beginning in John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and beginning with verse 1. Um, we'll give you a minute to get there in your Bibles. <clears throat> Remember that David uh, said, The Lord is my shepherd. Very familiar portion of scripture that many times is read at a funeral. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But David said, The Lord is my shepherd. And here in this verse of Scripture that we're reading, in these verses, Jesus is telling those that will listen that he is the good shepherd. In fact, he's the same shepherd that David said, the Lord is my shepherd. So here is the good shepherd, the one David said was his shepherd, and he's on earth. David didn't have that luxury. Amen. David didn't have the luxury of having the good shepherd walking with him like the disciples did. But here, the good shepherd, the shepherd that David knew in the Old Testament, has come down upon the earth. The word has been made flesh and is now on the earth, as we read. John chapter 10, verse 1, Verily, verily, this is the good shepherd speaking, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him that porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. Out of what? He leadeth them out of darkness. Amen? Thank God that he leads us out of darkness. Leads us out of confusion. Leads us out of sin. Amen. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. There's a lot of folks today that are saying that they are sheep, the Lord's sheep, but they're listening to the voice of strangers. And those strangers are not leading the sheep by the still waters. Their souls are not being restored. Are you listening, people? He will always lead you in the right way. He'll always lead you out of darkness and into the light. He'll always lead you away from death, uncleanness, amen, and lead you into life and wholeness. 
Praise God. So if you're hearing a voice today that's contrary to that, you know that it's not the good shepherd. And notice it says he leadeth his sheep. Amen? He doesn't drive them. If you know anything about sheep, shepherds, the one that drives the sheep is the one is called the slaughterhouse. It's the butcher. It's the one that's taking the sheep to market. He driveth the sheep. But Jesus doesn't drive the sheep. He leads them. Amen? Now, I want us to see an example in the Scripture where Jesus is the good shepherd and he's speaking to one of his sheep. Praise the Lord. And we pick up our reading here in John chapter 20. Hallelujah. And we're going to begin our reading in verse 10. Then the disciples went away again to their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Now for you out there that believe in this New Age teaching, of the ascended masters understand that Jesus is not one of the ascended masters and that he was not ascending to God that he because he wasn't God when he said he was ascending to God and he said my God what he meant was he is the son of man he's going through the process of where he came down to the earth he had stripped himself of all his glory and now he's going back to where he once was Amen? The Son of Man became, or the Son of God became the Son of Man. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. When Jesus was on the earth, He was just as much man as He was God in the flesh. Are you listening? So, to complete the cycle, He still has not yet ascended to the Father. He's not positioned in His God, in the Godhead yet. So he says, to my God. That doesn't mean that he's an ascended master or that he's one of, like Muhammad, or one of the many ascended masters. There's no such thing as ascended masters. That's, a, that's deception. These are the ones that are climbing up some other way that Jesus mentioned in John chapter 10, verse 1. They're thieves and they're robbers and they're trying to climb up some other way. There is no such thing is evolving into godhood. Are you listening? You'll never be God, people, so put it out of your mind. Amen? 
will never be God. The only reason that Jesus uh, is God is because he is God. Amen? Not because he's trying to make himself God. He is God. And God, the Son, uh, took on the form, amen, of man. He took part. He didn't take the blood. He took the, the, the body, amen, the flesh, but he didn't take the blood. Amen. How many know that the blood that was flowing in Jesus Christ when he was on the earth didn't come from a man? Amen. That DNA that was in him was not from this world. Praise God. That DNA was from heaven. Amen. The power of God. That DNA was a heavenly origin. And today they're all caught up in genos and trying to understand DNA and thinking that they're going to somehow go back to the tree of life or the, or the Garden of Eden through the geno. Well, I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that the blood that was flowing in Jesus Christ was not of an earthly origin. It was of a heavenly origin. And that which was conceived in Mary was of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Hallelujah. She had never known a man. She had never known Joseph. But yet she conceived. The angel said, you will conceive and that holy thing that you shall bring forth shall be the Son of God. Hallelujah. Oh yeah, he came down. Thank God he did. If he didn't come down, brothers and sisters, you and I would never go up. Just remember that. But getting back to our lesson here, he is the good shepherd and why didn't he say to Mary, Mary, it's me. Why didn't he say, Mary, stop crying, stop weeping, it's me? Why did he say it the way he did? Why did he say, whom are you seeking? Who are you looking for? Why did he talk to her that way? Because Jesus did not want Mary to know him after the flesh. Are you listening? He wanted to know her to know him after his voice. How many know that God is a spirit? Amen. You and I are not to know God after the flesh. We're not to know Jesus after his physical body. We're to know him after the spirit. We're to know him for his voice. Amen. And so Jesus went on to say Mary's name. Now listen to me. We just read in John chapter 10, my sheep know my voice and I call them by name. Hallelujah. This is the good shepherd. You can be assured that Mary was talking to the good shepherd. He's not dead, praise God. He's alive. And he said, Mary. And she turned herself about. She knew it was him. But why is it that we read in the scripture that Moses didn't know the Lord's voice? In fact, Jesus or God had to say to Moses, his name twice. Moses. Moses. And then Samuel. Samuel. And then Martha. Martha. Why does God sometimes have to repeat our name? He said, my sheep hear my voice. He says, I call them by name. Mary didn't have to hear her name only once, brothers and sisters. Because she knew him. You understand, she was looking at the physical at first, but when she heard his voice, when she heard her name called by the good shepherd, she immediately turned around. She knew him. Do you know him? When's the last time Jesus called you by name, friend? A lot of folks today listening to the voice of the stranger. Amen? Amen? A lot of folks listening to the voice of strangers today. A lot of folks trying to climb up some other way that are thieves and robbers. But who on God's green earth today knows the good shepherd? Amen. How many of you out there listening right now, do you know him? And does he know you? And does he call you by name? Hallelujah. Are you like Martha? Martha? where Jesus has got to say your name twice because you're not paying attention? 
Are you like Moses, caught up in the bush, in the burning bush, and caught up in the miraculous phenomena, caught up into that which is paranormal, that which is not of the physical world, and God's got to call your name twice? Are you like Samuel, that you still immature, even though God is calling you, but you don't know his name, you don't know his voice, you don't know him as Lord? And when he tells you, when, when someone advises you to call him Lord, you still don't call him Lord because you don't know him? Listen, brothers and sisters, he is the good shepherd. Amen. And if you get to know him, you won't want. Amen. He'll, he'll make you to lie down in green pastures. He'll lead you by the still waters. And he'll restore your soul for his namesake. Mercy and truth will follow you all the days of your life, brothers and sisters, if you're following the good shepherd. And he won't let the wolf get you. Please listen to me. He lays his life down for the sheep. Jesus will never lead you into harm's way. Do you know, over and over, God warned Paul to not go to Jerusalem. Over and over, he warned him. Don't go to Jerusalem, Paul. But he wouldn't listen. He warned him over and over. Don't go to Jerusalem. Even the scripture says where Jesus actually did not go openly among them, amongst them once he knew they wanted to kill him. Jesus wasn't suicidal. People, why would Paul the Apostle say, I'm ready to die? Did Jesus want Paul to die? Not any more than he wanted Samson to die. He's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. But when we disobey God, we may end up as a martyr. Some actually go in as a martyr like Stephen, obeying God. But there are those that try to do it their own way. And they end up being martyred. But God, I believe, shows us a better way. I believe the Lord would have us to walk with him as Enoch walked with him. And I believe in this hour, God is going to take some, just like he took Enoch. Are you walking with God? Are you walking with the good shepherd? Are you learning his voice? Are you one of those in this hour that God has got to go leave the 99 and go search for the one and break the legs and bring you back to the fold? Where are you today? Are you walking with the good shepherd? Are you happy because he feeds you well? Because he nurtures you? Because he keeps you from fear and harm? I will tell you, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ will never do you wrong, ever. He will always lead you in the good way. Oh yeah. He'll even teach you about the highway of holiness. And none can walk up there but the pure in heart. But there's a way that's high, brothers and sisters, that the vulture's eye can't see that way. The devil can't see it. The devil can't find it. There is a river, David said. Make glad the city of God. And God will teach you and I how to flow in that river, that, that highway that is above, praise God, this world. Jesus said we could be heat, seated with him in heavenly places. We might have our feet on the earth, brothers and sisters, but we're, we should be walking in the kingdom on that highway. Amen. Not a highway like on this earth, highway, because you can fit more cars on and go faster. No, a highway because it's high high above. Amen. It's a highway. It's a highway, brothers and sisters. It's a high way of holiness. And none can walk up there but the pure in heart. You don't just venture onto that highway by mistake. Fools don't just ear into that highway and find themselves on the highway by mistake. You don't go to heaven by mistake. Listen to what it says here. Mary has chosen that good part, 
that shall not be taken from her. That word part means inheritance. Have you chosen? Have you made Jesus your choice? Mary made Jesus her choice. To the degree that when every other disciple left the tomb, Mary stayed behind, weeping. Something where she couldn't leave. She just was compelled. She didn't want to just go away and forget it like the other disciples. We don't know what's become of him. I go fishing, Peter says. Mary stayed at the tomb. Are you listening, people? She waited there. And she wept. And how many know that Jesus had no intention of stopping and talking to Mary on his way up to the Father. That's why he left the angels there. But Jesus, out of compassion, was compelled. He was compelled. If you understand anything about the Lord Jesus Christ in his compassion, he was moved with compassion and he stopped on his way up to the throne. He stopped and he said to Mary, don't touch me. Does Jesus care? How can you say Jesus doesn't care? How many of us, knowing that we're on our way to the throne, would have stopped and took the time to comfort Mary? Jesus probably could have said, well, the angels can handle that. How many know he wants to be your personal Lord and Savior. Amen? He does send forth angels. Are they not sent forth ministering spirit? Oh yes, they're, they're sent forth to those that are heirs of salvation. But I will tell you there's something greater, there's something more wonderful, there's something better, amen, than having an angel come and minister to you, brothers and sisters. There's something greater than Gabriel coming and bringing a message to you, Daniel. There's something greater. And that's when you have a personal relationship with the Lord God, amen, when the great God of heaven, you can hear his voice and he talks to you. And you have a communion with him. You have a relationship with him. Amen. Not very many ministers today know his voice. So many today, they want to have a conversation. Jesus didn't have a conversation with Mary. Not in physical or human terms. He didn't immediately say, Mary, what are you doing? Aren't you, you're being silly, Mary. No, he said, who are you seeking? Who are you seeking? Who are you looking for? And then he said her name. Jesus doesn't play games, people. He desires more than anything that you and I will know his voice. There, that's under attack in this hour, like nothing has ever been under attack. I'm telling you, they are mocking anybody that says they hear from God today. They mock you. But Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Oh, Brother Joseph, that's talking about the scripture. They know my voice. They won't listen to the voice of a stranger. Do you know the Lord's voice? Well, Brother Joseph, I listened to this broadcast and isn't that good enough? No, you need to know his voice for yourself. Amen? Now you can fine tune and you can train, be trained to hear his voice by listening to this ministry, but you've got to know his voice for yourself, brothers and sisters. And let me tell you, the Lord's voice will always comfort you. Always. He'll never make you anxious. He'll never make you afraid. The Lord will never send anything your way with the motive that will make you afraid, anxious, troubled. He'll always comfort you. His voice comforts. That small, still voice. Amen. Mary 
didn't have to be, she didn't have to hear her name twice. One time. This is the one that said, I choose Jesus as my inheritance. While Martha was cumbered and troubled about many things, Mary was at the feet of Jesus listening to his voice. Hallelujah. She knew Jesus as more than just a man. She didn't see Jesus as a man that was trying to go through the steps of ascension or trying to evolve into a God. No. She didn't see Jesus as a guru. She didn't see Jesus as some new age guru. She didn't see Jesus as someone like uh, what they call Saint Germain. No. She knew Jesus by revelation that he is the Son of God, eternal Son of God. She called him Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Lord. Amen? Now, I will say this in closing. I think the reason why so few today know Jesus and know his voice and have a relationship with him like Mary did is because Jesus cast out several devils out of Mary. And I think we're dealing with a demon-possessed generation today. I really do. I believe many of God's people have problems. Did you hear what I said? Just because you're saved, just because you're under the blood, does not mean that you don't have a problem that God needs to bring deliverance in your life. Oh yeah, you can have a devil, people, and still be saved. Don't believe that lie. Until Jesus delivers you, until Jesus casts that thing out, yeah, you can be saved and you can be harassed. You can be tormented. Because a lot of God's people won't fully forgive after they've come to salvation. They still have things where they've got baggage and they've still got unforgiveness. And God says, if you won't forgive from your heart, I'll turn you over to the, tor- my father will turn you over to the tormentors. Those are demons, people. Fear hath torment. And God will allow you to be tormented to get you to get to your knees, to get you to cry out for mercy that he will deliver you. And there's a lot of people today that have got problems. A lot of God's people today have problems. And when I call it, when I say problems, I'm talking about demons. That's right. And I have said this in the past, this is a demon-possessed generation. Now, as a believer in Christ, possession, we, we're not possessed in the sense that demons control us. So really, I don't believe that a person can have a devil that's saved as far as possession, but I do believe that a saved person can certainly be oppressed by a devil. And many of God's people today are oppressed by demons. And that's why they can't hear the Lord's voice. Brothers and sisters, we need deliverance. Amen? We need to be saved. We need to be delivered. Amen? We need to know His voice. We need to follow Him. Hallelujah! Praise God! Because He's still doing it today. Amen? He is still delivering today. Hallelujah! He is still the Good Shepherd. Hallelujah. Praise God. He will not, He will not just leave us all alone. Amen. And let the, let the wolves devour us. No. He will protect us. He will watch over us. He will keep us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have you chosen that good part? As Mary did. Mary made the choice. You need to make the choice. Is Jesus your all in all? Is he your highest treasure? Where your heart is, where your treasure is, where your heart will be also, the Bible says. Where's your heart today? What is your treasure? 
What do you value the highest in your life? That's where your heart will be. Hallelujah. He is the good shepherd. Oh yeah, the good shepherd. He leads his sheep. Amen? He calls his sheep by name. His sheep know his voice. And I like this part. No other voice will they listen to. No other voice will they follow. They will flee the voice of the stranger. Amen? The real true sheep, the real true followers of Jesus Christ will know his voice. They won't listen to a minister that's a stranger. No, no. No. They will only listen to the voice of a minister that is an under-shepherd. Amen? That has the Lord's voice. Words that are seasoned with grace. Gracious words. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the Lord's desire, brothers and sisters, is to lead you and I into green pastures. Amen. Life, eternal life. The river of life. The tree of life. Hallelujah. Into paradise. Hallelujah. I love it that He leads us out before He leads us in. Amen. He leads us out of this world. He leads us out of the darkness. He leads us out of the confusion. He leads us out, even as he brought Israel out of e or Israel out of Egypt, to bring them in. He brought them out to bring them in. And before the Lord can lead you and I in, he must first lead us out. Amen. I like the prayer Jesus told his disciples to pray, lead us not into temptation. Don't lead us into temptation. Jesus will never lead you into be tempted of the devil. No. No, he won't. He'll lead you out, away from the tempter. Are you listening? That's why the scripture says, let no man think when he is tempted, he is tempted of, of God. God can't be tempted and God doesn't tempt. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. That's where the tempter comes in. When you've got a lust in your heart that's not good. When you desire or have a passion in your heart that's for something wrong. The devil will come and tempt you. But God will never tempt you. God will test you, but God won't tempt you. And God doesn't just tempt you to dangle a carrot before, your, uh, before you or to uh, put you through, a, a, you know, like a lab rat putting you through tests. No. When God tests you, he changes you. The very word that tests you will change you. Amen. The word of the Lord tried Joseph. Hallelujah. And when the test was over, Joseph was exalted. Amen. The word will change you. The word will test you and change you. Hallelujah. Praise God. The trying of our faith be more precious than of gold, though it be tried with fire. May be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. The test is for a purpose. It's to transform you and I. But it's not the test that's doing it. It's the word in the test that we put our trust in, brothers and sisters. When you apply the truth, when you apply His Word, when you listen to His voice in the test, that's how you overcome. That's how you come out on top. That's how you come out triumphant. Listening to His voice in the test. In these things we are more than conquerors because we listen to Him and we follow Him out of the test. Out of the fire. Through the fire and out of the fire. Hallelujah. Listening to his voice. Obeying his voice. Following him. Doing his will. He won't let the fire kindle upon you. Just keep going. Just keep walking. Keep listening to his voice. Amen. Hallelujah. Every one of us have got to pass through the fire. 
Not one of us are exempt. If we're going to get to the tree of life, you've got to go through that flaming sword. You've got to pass through the fire. Hallelujah. He's able to shield us. He's able to protect us as he transforms you and I from faith to faith, glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. He is the Good Shepherd.